<laughs> Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the April Fool's edition of The Correct Views. Real quick, for those of you that don't know, I have created fictional characters, as I like to say. I saw one set in an amusement park. Characters that never existed but could have. None of the characters you are about to see are real. They come out on April Fool's Day, and they come out on Halloween. All of the news, however, is real news, and all sources are real sources. So, let's get into it. Buddy Puff is returning to the show. Let's bring Buddy on. <laughs> hey, man. It's awesome to be back on. Like, I had my own channel. I had, like, negative views. People were tuning in. And then, like, asking YouTube, like, how to erase stuff from their history. Because, like, they didn't want to be associated with me. So, like, they took it down. Okay, man. Uh, you gotta be, first, take care ahead. Daily Crawler. Flashback. Oh, I got, like, a flashback. Man. Romney says it's a mistake for the conventions to choose the nominee. <laughs> Well, which is kind of like what he wants to do now. So, like, I think the weed was sort of getting to him. He was, like, smoking and said, no, man, you can't have a contested convention. And then, like, you're like, well, Robbie, you forgot he was saying it. And, like, I think the plot was sick and it's all on his head, man. Like, I forget where I was going with that. But Mitt Robbie is currently pushing for a contested convention. Despite saying three years ago that he'd be like a downer, man, he like didn't want it. He said it would be a mistake to have a minority choose the nominee, but like now, you know, since like Trump's going after it, it's like, all right, you're allowed to cheat some people, but you're not allowed to cheat others. I think I think that's bullshit, actually. Oh, am I allowed to say that? Or I'm gonna, the people are gonna be not hitting subscribe on Sam's channel. <laughs> The former Massachusetts governor and the Boston Globe in 2013 that he wished to change the Republican Party nomination process. So it was like before he was like, nah man, like I'm really not in favor of cheating. And then he was like smoking weed with like Chris Christie or something, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if Chris Christie smokes, but like... He's like all fat and shit, so I like imagine he probably like took something. He's like going after Doritos and stuff. Uh, I was Sam wanted me to play this sample for everybody, so I'm like, if I can like figure out how it works. <laughs> I don't usually use a computer. I did my show from an advocate. Uh, oh, there it is. Here it is. This is funny. Like, check this out. Shut up! You're a cop killer. <laughs> I love horses! I love horses! <laughs> Loving horses, man. Like, I got, like, a story about somebody who so didn't love a horse. Like, if there was, like, Mr. Ed would be so pissed right now. He'd be, like, throwing his hair around and stuff. And I don't know how you throw it with a hoof, but we'll go with it. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, anti-Trump protester who slapped a police horse and describes herself as a commie feminist. And like, I think this is who Mitt Romney was out smoking, like, the split with me. And she's like, you know, I don't like Trump, I'm gonna go hit this horse. And he's like, alright, we're gonna have a contested convention. Uh, the anti-Trump protester arrested in Kansas City for physically attacking a police horse described herself as a commie feminist. So it's like, you got animal lovers and PETA, and they'd be like, man, how are you going to attack a horse? Now I know that PETA people are going to be voting for Trump. It only helps his numbers. <laughs> Horses for Trump. Waving a giant red flag, 29-year-old April J. Foster was caught on camera yelling at the horse <laughs> and trying to, <coughs> trying to scare the animal as police attempted to control the unruly mob. Like, you can't have these, like, you can't say that. You can't have these, like, Trump horses walking around. So, like, I'm gonna see if I can piss off the horsey. Uh, she slapped the horse. 
and tried to run away, but the police singled her out for arrest. Like, you can get in trouble for hitting the horse. It says horses are highly sensitive prey animals. Well, if it had preyed on her bitch ass, she'd have been in a lot of trouble. And this poor horse was without a doubt already under tremendous amounts of stress. And then it got like its ass kicked. That's so uncool. Alright, well, I'm kind of like done talking because Sam says that I'm the most annoying of all the characters, so I never get much time to talk. He says he can hear people, like, like real people, like hitting unsubscribe in like drones. So uh, I guess uh, we're gonna go away from that and uh, go ahead and uh, bring up the next part. Billy Jill, like, did Bob his something. He's like, way cool. Christelle, if I'm not mistaken, Buddy's reports get worse and worse and worse every time he's on. Uh, he, I think he did all right this time. I mean... Uh... I don't know, guys. Let me know. Out of the characters that we have, let me know if it's time for maybe for us to fire Buddy Puff. I don't know. I like him. But, uh, you know, he's definitely an acquired taste. Who do we have coming up next? Uh, Billy, Bob... Uh, I you don't know who's next. Oh, Billy, Bob, something or another. I don't know. <coughs> what, right, what, 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 is he, what does he do for the company? Oh, uh, he's in charge of accounting. He does all the books. Oh, he does all... Oh, okay. So he must be a really smart guy. Excellently smart. Oh, all right. Well, let's meet him. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? Um. <laughs> Got everybody on here all watching like at the same time. I might not be watching at the same time. You might not be viewing it at all as a matter of I wouldn't watch it. The USA Today flight attendant set bathroom plane, uh, but set plane bathroom on fire during the flight. Now it says you ain't allowed to smoke. It never at any point did it ever say that you ain't particularly allowed to set the airplane on fire. I happen to think if they had put up better signs, this kind of thing wouldn't happen. Like they say you ain't allowed to bring oxygen in. You ain't allowed to bring fire in where the oxygen is because the oxygen in the hospital will go boom. You know, so... I guess they should probably put out signs for something like this as well. This happened in Detroit. Unusual things don't, don't ever happen in Detroit. The FBI was arrested on an American Airlines flight attendant who allegedly set an aircraft bathroom on fire, or board a flight, and then portrayed himself, himself as a hero. He was really the culprit. So like he wanted people to think he was like all cool and like he was kind of good as it gets kind of thing. And he's like, I'm going to set this thing on fire. Now, I, I don't think he knew it was uh, against the law because you ain't allowed to smoke. Didn't say you ain't allowed to set nothing on fire and try to make yourself out like a hero. According to court documents, Jonathan Toffer Yamatoya, he must be from America, made up several accident stories but eventually admitted to authorities that he intentionally set fire to the real lavatory's paper towels using a green big lighter. Now see that might have been another thing because if it had been like a red big lighter or something maybe like a little bit more manly they probably wouldn't have had such problem with it. Uh, captain was, the captain was notified, tower was alerted, flight 1418 was granted emergency status, so I guess when your plane's on fire, it's considered an emergency. They need to bring everyone like down out of the sky. Uh, I got one more for you. The last time I tried to talk to you, got nothing but glitches. Actually, I don't even know if I got anything but glitches now. I think I'm live. Oh, good, I am live. I just get purtier and purtier. Adam Salazar, what you laughing at? I Wait, wait till our gets in here. I'll have him make you dinner. Alan Salazar, paranoid anti-gun professor, calls 911 terrified by ROTC exercises. I think this person would have been a lot more afraid if she'd have been on that last airline flight myself, but we're going to go with it because that's what they is. Uh, this actually should have made Dunce Camp of the Month award. Now, I don't really know why Sam gives me stories that sound like they're all about idiots, but he always does. I don't really know why that is. I do his accounting real good. I, I ain't that good at adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, but found out I'm great at math. University of North Dakota professor penned up an op-ed claiming she felt threatened by the guns used at the ROTC exercises. 
Well, see, I could understand it maybe like they were like pointing at her. It all depends what kind of teacher she was. And I had, I, when I was in school, I had taken a gun out of the, well, I ain't gonna get into that. I'll lose my position. Heidi, it, it looks like an eye chart. I'm not even sure it's a name. Maybe the guy that typed it sneezed. C-Z-E-R-W-E-I-C. -E 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 I've never seen anything like it. An associate professor of English. English? <laughs> Says he was, he says English. And going with what it says, says she's absolutely terrified when she looked out her window and saw a uniformed man performing military maneuvers with guns. I'd have been more terrified if I'd have seen him performing something else with a gun. But I ain't gonna go into that, that's for another website. I look up from my office computer to see two figures in camo with guns outside my window, says a week wrote in a Grand Forks world over the weekend. My first thought was for my students and my safety. Now you can tell by looking at the screen if she had an ounce of brains in her head that they're dressed in armor fatigues. I mean, it, you don't even know whether or not the ROTC is active in your own school. I'm not going to screen share. You're going to get to see my pretty face for a minute. It makes you wonder exactly what it is that they are thinking. Maybe they weren't doing no thinking and all that happens a lot, they get to safe spaces and they're worried someone's going to put something on the wall and up. The professor claimed she was so overcome with fear that she could barely utter words. Of course, I guess she must have uttered words to the 911 caller because, you know, they didn't send in a SWAT team. Uh, I can barely talk first with fear and then with rage when the dispatcher reports back that yes, in fact, I've probably just seen all CC cadets. Though they're going to send an officer just to kind of check out and make everything was okay. Well, this is why I think, I don't know why I got this story, but this woman's an absolute idiot. She says, go and go ahead and call the cops every single time she sees them out there. It's not my job to decide whether people carrying guns at school are on actual threats. She says, it's my job to teach and get home to my family. So at any minute, people that plan on going into the army for the rest of their life, might just freak out and decide to shoot this eye chart lady right in the head. And there'd be like brains and stuff all over the place. And I ain't gonna help nothing because she teaches English, not like biology or anything where that kind of thing could be useful. So I guess at the end of the day, the best thing she could do is probably teach at a different school. But they won't fire her. They'll probably give her a safe space and a promotion. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get my pretty self out of here. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe. And I got one more guy coming up. Now, he always creeps, I say he always creeps me out just a little bit. Every single time I see him, Og Mortis is coming up. Oh, you got the invisible, I didn't even say, no, I didn't even say. Got the invisible man going to be doing the ads. I, now I got to go back to screen share. I, there's so much work here. But yeah, this is Billy Joe Bo Jimmy John. Signing off, that's Billy Joe Bob Jimmy John. And I hope you liked everything that I had to say. Because I don't know if I could say it again. Because I really not did. I don't even know why he had me on the show, to tell you the truth. I'm going to go back to screen share here for Sticker Junkie. I think he did a really good job. I really did. Now, who do we have doing the uh, the ads? We have uh, the Invisible Man, Bob. Bob's coming back again. Oh, Bob is a remarkable human being. Let's bring him on. Take us off screen, Chef. Oh, hello there. It is me, Bob, the Invisible Man. And I am most happy to be here telling you about Sticker Junkie. That's right, if you have not been to Sticker Junkie, then you're going to want to go ahead and do so as quickly as possible. Your stickers will look absolutely amazing, and if you are on low def, you are not going to see me at all because it is stuck on screen share and it hardly matters because I'm only talking for a second. Where is the camera? I'm looking in the wrong direction. Get me out of here. I don't want to be on your stupid show. Bob seemed really angry this time, Krista. I mean, like, really, really angry. Is it just me? Uh, he seemed a bit angry. Speaking of angry, now it's the time to do the show! Oh, God. Oh, no. Arg. Arg, now can you at least try to be kind? I'm the very definition of kind! Well, friends, Arg Mortis, he's our final guest, our guest character today. 
he makes predictions, and I wasn't going to bring him back on the show. Some people have found him to be offensive. However, Ard predicted that pumpkins were going to be considered a threat to global warming. He predicted that somebody would try to kill Donald Trump with knives. He was swinging knives around, and lo and behold, the very same thing happened in real life. So while I understand that Arg is a bit of an acquired taste, we're going to bring him back on. He's our human resources director. He's the gentleman who kindly answers the phone if you call the show. He is the one and only Mr. Arg Mortis. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I finally got a chance to do it, to do a segment myself. I've been wanting to do a segment for a long time. And they always give me these stupid stories. And then I always make some kind of prediction, and the prediction ends up being true. Uh, this is from Yahoo News. Uh, Kizito McCoy. What is Sam with crazy names today? He saves all the easy names for himself. Uh, Reuters. Foundation scientists in East Africa plan to exploit trained rats' <laughs> highly developed sense of smell to carry out mass screenings for tuberculosis among inmates of crowded prisons in Tanzania and Mozambique. I think that that's wonderful news. They bring the rats into the prison. Most of the time they're used just for food. Now they're using them to sniff out TB. African giant pouched rats trained by the Belgian non-governmental organization OPPO are widely known for their work sniffing our landmines and now developing a reputation in East Africa for their skill and speed at detecting TB too. Uh, you don't want to bring in a dog to do a rat's job. You don't want to bring a knife to a gunfight. Because if you do, I throw the fucking knife at you. Tuberculosis is the leading cause of death after HIV from an infectious disease around the world. So now instead of going to the dogs, it's going straight to the rats. Uh, Mikhail Thalen, Swedish Liberal Party youth wing, calls for legalization of necrophilia and incest. Oh, yeah. You take the dead, you take the dead and you put your member inside the rotting bodies. That's what you do. Make sure you call the correct views. I'll answer the phone. The Swedish Liberal Party's youth wing proposed legalizing necrophilia. Banging the dead and incest sleeping. Where, where's Billy Joe Bob at? Billy Joe Bob, they're trying to legalize incest. That's right up your alley. Right up something else, too. It was Sunday during the annual meeting in Stockholm. They want to bang the dead in Stockholm. According to the motion filed, two consenting siblings, 15 years of age and older, should be allowed to engage in sexual intercourse, while sex with a human corpse should also be legalized. As the deceased gave permission prior to the passing, I make it a prediction that it's gonna end up legal. It's gonna end up legal to bang the dead. It's gonna end up where they're gonna say, you just have a vile affliction if you wanna sleep with your sister, it's fine. <laughs> as long as she does the dishes. You are a youth organization. And one of our tasks is to think one step further. That means getting permission to... I wonder if it'd be okay to bang your dead relative. You could mix the two. And you could take knives when you were done. And the things you could do with those knives. It says we don't like morality laws. I thought they did. In general, in this legalization is not protecting anyone. So it should be legal according to the liberal youth of Sweden to bang the dead and to sleep with your sister. I don't know why he gave me that story. That's a story that should have went to the last idiot. Speaking of idiots, it's time for the, the dumb deal of the day. We're gonna learn a little bit. Not even out of here. We're gonna learn a little bit. We're gonna learn a little bit about nails. We're gonna learn a little bit about pride and workmanship. Let me ask you a question. The dumb of the day shouldn't it go to somebody. 
somebody that has has proven themselves too stupid to read an instruction manual, too stupid to follow even the least bit of directions. Don't you think that's who should get the dumb deal today, because that's who got it. And if you don't like it, then call me, I'll answer the phone, and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. Uh, that doesn't happen in the Bible. This is from the Daily Mail. The dramatic moment that an actor dressed as Jesus falls 13 feet from a cross during the crucifixion reenactment in Guatemala. Now, let me ask you a question. Crystal, how was Christ crucified? He was hung from a cross. And what did they hang him with? Nails, I believe. Isn't that the whole reason he didn't fall? Yes. It... If you're going to have a crucifixion play, then I think it's best to get the nuances done right. You take the nails and you, that's how they don't fall off. That's why they're not thrown from a building. That's why Christ wasn't thrown from a cliff. He was crucified. He wasn't left up there by some idiot. And if I knew who it was that didn't put the nails in, if I knew who the director of this play was, he'd get the dumb deal of the day. He's getting the dumb deal of the day anyway. He's in Guatemala and I'm gonna find him. And I'm gonna tell him he's a dummy. Tragically, tragedy struck for real during a reenactment of Jesus' death when the main actor plunged from the top of the cross to the ground, to the unforgiving ground. The video of the man dressed as Christ falling 13 feet into the crowd below has now gone viral on social media, and the incident is said to have happened during Easter celebrations. Uh, it's nice to know they're not crucifying people throughout the rest of the year. Then again, it happened in Santa Barbara, not the Middle East. Uh, this is frustrating. Let me show you the way this is done. There's a video, there's pictures of a man. I'm gonna go to screen share. They're not sure of the condition of the individual. And if any time this report is offensive, Sam is a Christian. I am a lunatic who doesn't even exist, so don't tell me that I'm being offensive. And if you think I'm offensive, then call me and we'll talk about it. Here's the video. Here's the video of the idiot who didn't put the nails in. <laughs> It doesn't look like he was seriously hurt. Well, the dumb the other day goes there, friends, because if they would have used nails, if they would have used nails, it wouldn't have happened. This is Arg Mortis signing off, reminding you that if you're in Sweden, you might soon be able to drink the dead. Give me a nail, Crystal. Give me a nail. I don't have Give me a nail. I, I have a thumbtack. Wait, wait, wait! I found the nail! I'm gonna take her head off with a hammer!